Uh, this is Casey Willis. He's the co-executive producer of Archer. Yeah. And that's Matt Thompson. He is the executive producer of Archer. All right. First off, I wanted to ask a little bit about the uh, changing format of the show, having more themed seasons rather than the standard one, two, three going off. How did it come to that decision? It came to that decision because Adam Reed, the creator and uh, awesome, uh, wonderful writer of the show, he just came to talk to me one day and he's like, I cannot write another spy story. And like with this really distant look in his eyes. And he had an idea. And that idea was what if we did a completely new storyline each season? How cool would that be? And I think uh, that has proven out for me personally to be incredibly right. And um, I think about it in this term, which is I personally don't watch any TV show really in its ninth, tenth season. I feel like I got it. Uh, I know what those people are going to do. With our show, you don't know what those people are going to do. For example, this season on Archer, um, there's, a, there's a character named Krieger who is everybody's favorite kind of evil scientist. Now he's a talking parrot. And he still kind of has that Krieger thing inside of him, but what does that mean? You know? And so for me, it's like it keeps the show incredibly fresh. We're not just doing the same thing. The characters are those same characters that you love, but they're slightly tweaked versions of themselves. Like another example would be there's a character on our show named Cyril, who is kind of the put upon accountant, oh, woe is me, and a punching bag for our main character, Archer. This season, he's a bloodthirsty Nazi that's gonna probably murder you. But he still feels like Cyril, and that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm um, talking a little bit about Danger Island. What can viewers expect in this upcoming season? Uh, last season, we did uh, Archer Dreamland, and it was uh, kind of an homage to noir films, and it was darker, and it was serious, and there was some really kind of sad moments in the, in the series. So for Danger Island, we wanted to kind of go the opposite direction and do exciting, fun, and uh, just have a good time and it's, make it bright and vibrant. And it's just super light and fun, you know? Um, it just got really, really dark last season. <laughs> and now it's like, you know what? Let's go, uh, let's go hang out on this island. Oh no, there's a giant lizard, run! <laughs> oh no, it's quicksand, you know? It's kind of uh, it's a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit like an old uh, Indiana Jones serial, but like, uh oh, danger. Uh, as opposed to, uh oh, danger. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with the <laughs> with the developing like new theme seasons, if you guys had to choose like a new sort of genre or theme to tackle, what would you choose? I know all, one thing is uh, I I love the one that we're in because I've always loved that like cliffhanger ending, and you're like you don't want to know what's going to happen next, and you don't know what's around every corner. The thing that I love about this season, why we picked this genre, is because of the like. Uh oh, uh, you know, and so like on this island there are giant lizards that can kill you, cannibals that can kill you, lava that can kill you, quicksand, planes crashing into water, and that makes for an interesting story when at every turn there is literally danger. Besides that, I know what we're doing next season, and I'm very excited about that, so I can't say that, I know that one. One that we have maybe decided not to do was we were talking about doing a Knights of the Round Table yeah. thing. And I was kind of excited about that oh, as yeah. a nerd. It was going to be King Archer. King Archer. Uh, but that still might happen, maybe. But right now, it kind of got put on the back burner. Um, but we had talked about King Archer, and there was at one point, it was like, was it Krieger was Merlin ish? Right, yeah. And like, uh, was who was Pam like a giant dragon or something? <laughs> I don't know, but an ogre would be appropriate. Uh, that was going to be my answer as well. I don't know if we'll ever get there. But from a producer point of view and an illustrator animator point of view, it would have been very, very exciting, but also very, very, very difficult and expensive. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that we found out about doing genre hops is it makes a huge difference. And we didn't know this until we started doing it um, about how characters communicate with each other. And if you take away the ability for one person to be standing here and the next person to be a city over and they can't communicate with each other, on a quick storytelling basis, that really puts a cramp on you. And so I believe that Adam was like, I can't do King Arthur because I can't have them not be able to communicate from here to there. Uh, the show is, even though our, our show over the earlier seasons is set 
kind of roughly in the early 70s, but we never talk about the time period, you'll notice that everybody has cell phones because it was just like, screw this. I have to be able to yeah. talk to that character right now. Adam talked about how... How difficult off, that is yeah. as a writer for Adam. Like people pulling over and going to use a payphone every time they want to talk to somebody else. It would have been yeah. just a breaks on the stories. So. And then if you put that on King Archer, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, you're communicating through a magic mirror maybe? I, I don't know. Ooh, you solved it. You did it. <laughs> I guess y'all can do that season now. <laughs> um, and my final question is, Archer has such a like great cult following. Did you guys have any anticipation that that was going to happen? Not at all. We had no idea that it was going to happen. We'd been making uh, Adult Swim cartoons for a good long while. Casey made Sea Lab with us as well as Frisky Dingo with us. And the yeah, um, but uh, those shows, I get, no. What's interesting is when we meet Archer fans that also will then say, I love Killface from right. Frisky Dingo or something like that. So that's another level yeah. of Ooh. cult geekdom. I dare people in the later episodes, there's some really good Frisky Dingo references coming up, if anybody knows what it is. The Masters of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but... Um, the another thing is, we're in Atlanta. We've been making this show, we've made all of our Adult Swim shows here in Atlanta. We have 70% uh, of the people that work for us are SCAD students. Well, no longer students. Hopefully they graduated, I've never checked. <laughs> but um, because of that, you're not in LA, you're not in New York, where people are more apt to be talking about your television show or whatever to you. Everybody that I talk to outside of work is like a, you know, a lawyer or they work in a bank or, you know, they steal money from people or something. But we don't sit around and talk to people about stuff. So you're, when you're not inside of that industry every day, you don't have that exposure to have people talking to you about your job. So we're always just, we go to these festivals and stuff. And we're like, oh shit, people watch this show. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only time that we really get to interact with yeah. other people about the show is when we go to a, a con or a festival. You're so. filming a regular live action TV show. You're going to a set in another location, another location, and this and that and there, and you're actually interfacing with human beings. Mm -hmm. Art uh, illustrators, animators, they're, you know, solitary. You, you're sitting at a desk and you're doing your stuff. And so it's not about interaction with the world. So we're just kind of, we don't realize it's out there. But when we feel it, it's like, oh, you look at me. It's nice. It's awesome. Well, we're very happy to have you guys here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.